Have you ever had a feud with a neighbour? No, but I had a duel. <laughs> <laughs> and I won. <laughs> so his widow had to take down the wind chimes. <laughs> <laughs> I have decided that I would like to become attractive to men. <clears throat> and it's not even difficult to do, no offense, Rachel. I've researched it. <laughs> <laughs> and I think for the last 35 years of my life, I've been putting men off. I've been saying things like, you know, I don't want a boyfriend. I feel that men are like dolphins. They should be enjoyed on holiday. And I believe that. <laughs> but I think I, I need to be just more palatable to the average man. There are men who like me now, but they are perverts and foot fetishists. I want to broaden my horizons. <laughs> and so I know that men like a smiley gal. So I've got this. So that even when, <laughs> even when I'm feeling cross, then the men see me being very welcoming, smiling, and I'm immediately more attractive. Nothing does it more for a guy than a, a, a girl without nostrils. <laughs> <laughs> And you meet the perfect one, and then you're this. Have you got any other plans to make yourself more attractive yeah. to men? Yes, I do. I've got some tape here just to tape up my eyes because I've been wasting a lot of time on Botox, Jimmy. Cut to the chase. Just tape them up so I look more friendly. What are you taping? Just making effect? myself look younger and more attractive. Oh, uh, baby, look gone. Thanks. <laughs> Heard, Jimmy, that my hands are too large. I've got kind of man hands. So men really enjoy it when you've got teeny tiny hands. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it makes me a lot more approachable. Also, I will always be carrying around sandwiches uh, just to, to give an offer to any man <laughs> to seem more attractive to him, right? If it goes very well, Jimmy, I might be ambitious with this one. I've had a tattoo done that just says grateful for the opportunity. <laughs> um, uh, Susie, uh, you meet a lot of comedians in Dictionary Corner. Have you made any good friends? Um, Joe and I have become quite good friends, haven't we? Yeah, and, we have. Uh, we've, <laughs> <laughs> um, we've had some funny times. Do you remember the time by the canal I tried to <laughs> persuade you to get your willy out? One, one, one the what, sorry? And no further questions. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I really needed a wee. Susie said, oh, well, let's just go for a walk to this pub. And then we were on the canal, and she said, well, just get your willy out, do it here. <laughs> and um, I get stage fright, even at your urinals. <laughs> <laughs> so I said no, and I did it at the, at the pub. But Susie was furious. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a really scenic canal. It was a nice quite, uh, quite remote. Oh, well, nothing sets the scene of a scenic canal like Joe Lysett taking a slash. <laughs> As you know, I've always been very, it's well documented, very envious of pregnant women. Um, <laughs> <laughs> not because they have that magical opportunity to grow life within them. No, I've always envied that little bag they keep by the front door <laughs> to, to go to hospital in. I thought, why can't I have one of those? <laughs> I've always wanted a little bag, and you just... Something happens, you go, oh, I've got to go, and you just pick it up, <laughs> and you're gone. <laughs> and I thought, well, what would be a good reason to have one of these bags? I thought, well, going to prison. Yep. <laughs> I don't want to go, hey, cup, give me a chance to get my stuff together. <laughs> I just go, don't worry. I've been expecting you. <laughs> <laughs> so what's in your prison bag? Well... If you go to prison, one of the things you're going to need, right, is lags currency. Mm. Something to barter, you know? Right. Something that they all want. Big ball of blue tack. Because <laughs> they love a poster. Yeah. <laughs> They're not allowed drawing pins. <laughs> they can't be trusted. No, well, they'll put them on the governor's seat, won't they? <laughs> what are they like? I <laughs> know. Oh, Some of them are right scamps. <laughs> and then I thought, well, what do you need in prison? Something to let you know your sentence is, how long your sentence is doing. It's like a year <laughs> alarm clock. So that's... You set it to seven years <laughs> when it's time to go. Cos you... Cos time flies there. Yeah. <laughs> you got that there. There's that. Uh, I've also got some uh, sparkling water. Because in... <laughs> in prison... <laughs> <laughs> you know this? This may come as a shock to you, but in prison, they only have still. Oh. <laughs> 
And, uh, of course, finally, the most important thing of all is a fez. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because uh, the King of the Wing comes over and wants to sort you out. You put that on. <laughs> that genuinely really suits you. Yeah. So there's oh. that. And then I thought, well, hang on, Sean. Not just prison you can get a bag for. There's other things. Like, for example, I might be in an emergency call-up for Eurovision. <laughs> Someone may have had an accident, like a hamstring is pulled, and they need an, a Eurovision contestant. I've got a sparkly jacket. Ooh. Yeah, it's nice, That's that, isn't it? Nice. Very yeah. Eurovision. I might wear this throughout the show. <laughs> <laughs> what else have I got in here? I've got um, some Imodium, cos you're gonna eat a lot of foreign muck, aren't you, doing Eurovision? <laughs> <laughs> and I've got a phrase book, so every time the judges give me nil point, I can say bollocks in their language. <laughs> <laughs> so when they go, the Albanian jury is given nil point, I go, Bolle. <laughs> <laughs> and that's my son. I've got so, the lyrics so, to my what, song, my Eurovision winning song. What, what's the song called again? It's called Mayor of Sexy Town. <laughs> <laughs> Can we hear a little bit of that song? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, cheeky, cheeky, round and round. <laughs> 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 this, this is what they like on Eurovision. Oh, we're going nuts for it. Show. People are going nuts for it. <laughs> Take me out in Sexy Town. <laughs> Lift me up, spin me round, cos I'm the mayor of Sexy Town. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, baby, feel the beat. My car's parked on Sexy Street. <laughs> Is there more? Oh, yeah, lovely lady, you want to dance? I'll put you on my sexy pants. <laughs> <laughs> pull my chain, pull my chain, pull my chain. I don't know why that... <laughs> <laughs> I'll treat you good, I'll treat you right. Who's going to be your mayor tonight? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the mayor of Sexy Town, Sean Locke. Thank you. <laughs> I've started doing vegan in the week. Right. I want to be a better... Thank you for the round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> and the, it's, I have a lot of legumes. I love a legume, you know, like a, a, a nut or a pulse. I love those. And I'm having loads of them and it makes me very gassy. I'm so sorry. And... I don't know if you've tried the vegan lifestyle, but the poos, Jimmy... <laughs> uh, the only way I can describe it is like shoes falling out of a loft. <laughs> <laughs> I see you've got another, another go bag. What, what's in that one? This is what I call my on-the-run bag. Now, I've got the door, I've got the go-to-prison bag and the on-the-run bag, and depending on how loud the sirens are... <laughs> I'm, going, I'm going to jail, do you think you can make it on the run, Sean? <laughs> I, I sort of choose like that. And in here, I've got obviously got a fez. <laughs> <laughs> and then I've got... Um, I've got a high-vis jacket. Because the amazing thing about high-vis jackets are mm. they actually make you invisible. <laughs> you, put, you put one of these on, people think, oh, he's just, you know, he's just doing a job for the council. <laughs> he can't be that wanted criminal. <laughs> you, you put one on before, though, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Uh, I've got one of these. Because if you've got one of these, people assume you've got a dog. Yeah. <laughs> they think, oh, he's just out walking his dog. <laughs> and also, this ball is... Whoa. <laughs> That's actually been in Russell Brand's jockstrap. <laughs> But any <laughs> beagle off the scent. <laughs> uh, I've got my Lonely Planet guide to being on the run, and that's a lot of uh, gives you those loads of restaurants that don't ask too many questions. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, I've got this, which is my gold disc for uh, uh, Too Shy when I was the lead singer of Kajagoogoo. <laughs> so I just say, yeah, no, I'm Lamar. I'm not. I'm not Sean Lot. <laughs> Sean, did you get it? Closest I got was nine fifteen. 9.15, OK. Uh, too far away. I got it. Well, Johnny, uh, if you think you've got it, I will allow it. Uh, ten times nine. Ten times nine is ninety. Oh, I've... <laughs> <laughs> 900, and then I had 25... Is what, sorry? Is what? 25 is 900? plus nine would have equaled 36, and then I would have took off the six. So if the numbers have been different, <laughs> you would have got it. OK, time to go across now to Dictionary Corner. Christopher Bliss, renowned novelist, what have you got for us? 
Thank you. I've got a novel, actually. And I thought, um, well, I've got a few novels, but I thought that Susie could pick whichever one she wanted. Got a few novels here. I'm going to read out Susie's one. OK, so that one on the end. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Susie. Whoa! OK! <laughs> Absolutely wow! <laughs> now, this is the raunchiest one of the lot. <laughs> OK, All right. I didn't know you were like that, Susie. That's fine. <laughs> it was a hot and sexy midnight. <laughs> the moon had spent the last two weeks going from nothing to full, just like it was taking off a bra made of shadows. <laughs> <laughs> the sexiest man in Shropshire, Andrew Bulge, <laughs> walked into the hotel bar. He wasn't wearing any underwear. <laughs> and he wasn't wearing trousers either. <laughs> <laughs> His date waddled over to him. <laughs> <laughs> Her name? Wendy Sex. <laughs> her big lips hung down from her mouth like big dollops of ketchup. <laughs> with 32 smaller dollops of mayonnaise in between. <laughs> <laughs> Come here often, he asked. <laughs> Wendy smiled. How long's a piece of string? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Wendy was clever, but she wanted to test how clever Andrew was. Count to a million, <laughs> she said. <laughs> <laughs> and he did. <laughs> Do it in Japanese, she said. <laughs> uh, Wendy, I'm sorry, but you're pushing your luck now, don't you think? <sighs> Andrew replied, in Japanese. <laughs> 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 Carry on like this, said Wendy, and you're in for a real treat. What do you say me and you get out of here? There's a party in my bedroom, and the guest list is pretty small. <laughs> 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 so they went upstairs to her bedroom, where there were about 12 people... <laughs> <laughs> ...having a fairly small party. <laughs> she kicked them out, lay on the bed, and unclothed her own body. <laughs> <laughs> her breasts were like... Buttocks. <laughs> <laughs> and her buttocks were like breasts. <laughs> yeah. In fact, if it wasn't for her belly button, you wouldn't know which side was which. <laughs> <laughs> they laughed and had sex for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> and when they finished, Wendy looked at Andrew. Now that, she said, was absolutely wow. Christopher Bruce, everyone. Wow. <laughs> John, do you have any rules for visitors who come to your house? Um, I never ask people to take their shoes off, cos I hate that when I go to someone else's house and they make you take your shoes off. I think it's ridiculous. I don't know what's on your carpet, do I? Um, <laughs> but I do ask people to take their glasses off when they come into my house. <laughs> I find it rude. I think it's an insult to my hosting. Sort of implying that I'm going to hide stuff or not help you up the stairs. <laughs> Sean? Yes, Jimmy. <laughs> Sean, where in the world do you feel most at home? I tell you where I'm happiest, Jimmy, is on my mink farm. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love it there. Just being among the mink. A lot of people get a bit upset by it. They say, oh, well, you shouldn't farm them for their fur. And uh, I say, well, I don't, actually. I farm them for their looks. <laughs> <laughs> I wait till they're really, really, really cute. And I take a picture of them. <laughs> and I don't know what happens to them after that. This fella comes and collects them, but I don't think he uses them for the fur, cos he always wears, like, a leather apron. But... <laughs> 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 Complaints to yeah. the usual address. <laughs> I find that I'm actually quite a calm person. But very often I find the people around me are quite tense. <laughs> so I want to pass on some of my knowledge. So I've written a, a sort of self-help meditation book uh, called Relax, It's John Richards. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to call it Open Wide and Let Me In. <laughs> so, chapter one, sitting down. Try to find a symmetrical armchair or else sit on the middle seat of a three-seater sofa. 
You could try sitting dead centre of a two-seater sofa, but frankly, the sensation of the seam, unless positioned perfectly along the spine and down the perineum, <laughs> will prevent any chance of true relaxation. <laughs> Chapter 2. <laughs> Appropriate footwear and the perils of wearing slippers without socks. <laughs> perils? You can't wear slippers without socks. The smell, man. Anyway, <laughs> page 93. We are ready to begin breathing. <laughs> the final preparatory exercise is a good nose blow. Nothing is more stressful than a rogue bogey or snot flap clicking open on the in-breath, <laughs> closing with a whistle on the out-breath. <laughs> so what, what is it called? What's the technical term for a that? A snot flap. <laughs> oh, a snot flap. You find them a lot amongst people who travel by train. <laughs> I know a lot of people don't have chance to read books, so there is an audio version available read by me uh, in my <laughs> sexiest voice. Um, and that is available uh, here. This is the only copy. <laughs> so you can relax. John's relaxation, everyone. Um, since the dawn of time, <laughs> man has felt the need to... <laughs> To understand whereabouts he is and what is happening around him, hasn't he? Yes. And, uh, and I think one of the greatest puzzles that was solved by man was time itself. Oh. That great need to mark that. There. Anyway, I've done a funny calendar. <laughs> <laughs> so here is, here's my calendar. And um, surprisingly, it starts in January. <laughs> there we go. That's January. Talk me through uh, what's going on in that photo. Well, it's cold, isn't it, January? So I uh, <laughs> I'd show how cold January was. Anyway, <laughs> that's February. <laughs> so it's things. It's still cold. What? I've taken wait, my wait, 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 wait. I've taken my hat off and I'm taking my scarf off. Yeah, but why the spatula? <laughs> Pancake day. Pancake day. <laughs> Was this a long photo shoot for the calendar? <laughs> there we go. That's April. <laughs> I think we can put the coat away. Things are really hotting up. Wow. And uh, my flies are undone. <laughs> That's to commemorate April Fools. <laughs> okay, moving on. <laughs> hey! It's getting warm now, it's June. <laughs> July, it's really getting warm, got a bit of a tan, and the British Grand Prix's on. <laughs> <laughs> there we go, August. <laughs> Look at that. Is that a... Why have I got a remote, Jimmy? Kids are on holiday. <laughs> <laughs> there we go, there's a bra full of couscous <laughs> for September. <laughs> well, I don't want to... A bra full of couscous. Yeah. <laughs> the chances of you working that one out. <laughs> to, to expand your breasts. So you can... You pour hot water down and then they go... Out. <laughs> Anyone else? Who are going to kick yourself? <laughs> or me? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the Turner Prize. <laughs> <laughs> That's October. Last wasp. <laughs> <laughs> now we have November. <laughs> November, swap, swap traditional November outfit. <laughs> Any questions, Jimmy? Why have I got a semi? <laughs> <laughs> well, why have you got a fully? And then there's Christmas. Look at me. <laughs> Got a little roll of sellotape there. <laughs> Sean's calendar, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Susie has a podcast. She does it in her kitchen with Giles Brandreth, and afterwards they light a cigarette and do a <laughs> podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. 
Uh, Susie, are there any rude words that people use without knowing? I guess the classic is Burke, isn't it? Everyone knows about Burke. But what? So what about Burke? Rhyming slang. Berkeley Hunt. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's why I call you Burke all the time. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this next numbers game is big. It's time for Oxford Maths graduate Paul Foote to go head-to-head -head with Countdown Math legend John Richardson. It's <laughs> the battle of the super nerds. <laughs> He's an Oxford Maths graduate, and I'm slightly better at maths than most of the comics we have on here. <laughs> Uh, do you have any, uh, any trash talk for each other ahead of the battle? I didn't find any trash talk in the uh, trash can that Paul found his jacket in. <laughs> <laughs> oh. What's 78 million <laughs> divided by 4,674? I don't know, do you? Roughly, I mean, roughly. <laughs> <laughs> he owned him, <laughs> you owned him. <laughs> You guys have seen professional wrestling, right? There's, there's, <laughs> or like a big, a big boxing match when they sort of hype it up a little bit and mm. they get the purse Honestly, a bit Jimmy, bigger. Honestly, Jimmy, I'm sitting between them and the electricity coming <laughs> off the bed. <laughs> it's amazing. I was just. Oh. <laughs> I've spent years being the guy everyone expects to get the points at maths, and it's delightful to have someone here who'll do a good job of it. Just enjoying being the cool one. Yeah. <laughs> You're in his head now, and you're just kicking the shit out of him. <laughs> <laughs> OK, uh, Paul, your turn to pick the numbers. Just little ones, please, Rachel. Good. Oh! Do we need makeup for John? Cos he's, like, sweating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't mind. Stick him on there. <laughs> 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 yeah, he's getting all wobbly. <laughs> It's not so easy when it's just, oh, multiply 50 by 6, yeah. and that's 300, and then I add something. This yeah. is proper numbers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind as long as it's the same teams when we do Cats Does Countdown Does Hole in the Wall. Because <laughs> that's due a comeback, and I will f***ing destroy the pair of you at home. <laughs> Cats Does Countdown Does Naked Attraction. <laughs> Well, I say we make the pilot yeah. tonight. <laughs> Six small ones again. <laughs> Very nice. Well done. Okay, let's see those numbers. Okay, all the little ones. Two, seven, six, two, ten, and four. Please be twelve. Please be twelve. Please be twelve. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that'll do. Okay, John, have you have you have you got it? Yeah, I've got it, but it doesn't why, matter, does why it? Why are you crying, John? <laughs> something in my eye. <laughs> got something in my eye and I think it might be a sparkle. <laughs> Paul, have you, have you got it? I've got it. All right, so your first move, please, John, your first move. Seven. OK. Paul, your first move. Seven. <laughs> let's, let's speed this up slightly. So what was your first multiple? Seven game? plus four times six. OK, and yours, Paul? Seven plus four... <laughs> ..times ten. <laughs> Wait till you hear my next move. OK, where well, you go? <laughs> times ten. <laughs> and, Paul? Take the two... <laughs> ..and keep it for later. <laughs> Steal Paul's two... <laughs> ..stick it on my 660 and see what he does then. Two. Multiply by six. Multiply by six. Add the two that is mine. Hey. <laughs> by right, that is my two. Ten points to both teams, and I believe maths was the winner. <laughs> wow. <laughs> For what it's worth, I actually went to the open day at Oxford and I thought they were all pricks. <laughs> <laughs> For what it's worth, they told those they didn't like you either. <laughs> They said, actually, they weren't taking on cleaners. <laughs> <laughs> Harry, are you still vegan? Um, I am still vegan, um, yeah, but... I, like, I know what you're going to say, cos everyone's always like, oh, being vegan is the most annoying thing, but anyone that says that clearly doesn't know me at all, because there's much more annoying things about me than being a vegan. <laughs> 
Um, I cry if I'm like sad or if I'm happy or if I'm horny. Like I think like if I shut up and eat tofu, you should just be grateful. Very confusing for your husband. <laughs> do, do, you, do you tell him why you're crying or does he have to guess? Um, it's like a fun game we play. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, no, wrong. <laughs> Sean, um, have you ever taken the law into your own hands? Yes, yeah, Jimmy, loads of times. Uh, <laughs> I mean, recently I caught some shoplifters, right? Took them straight to the police station. They didn't press charges, because apparently... they reckoned it was a library. <laughs> <laughs> um, for a while, I was a very keen... <laughs> yeah, when you've, when you've worked it out, have a look. <laughs> <laughs> I also like to uphold rules and regulations as well, Jimmy. I was working on a porn shoot for a while. <laughs> I was in the catering truck. <laughs> obviously. Um, not many takers for the uh, pudding. <laughs> I, uh, at lunchtime, especially if there's a big scene in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, anyway, I was, uh, and I was really shocked at the lax health and safety regulations. They were doing a big scene, and the lube they were using was uh, petroleum-based. They had totally the wrong fire extinguishers. <laughs> <laughs> and I tell you, we had a right argument, because they were filming the finale, and I insisted everyone wore goggles. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, that was... Yeah, it was uh, I, got, I didn't have that job very long. But I, I always like to uphold rules and regulations, Jimmy. OK. John, what's the last thing that made you really lose your temper? Well, I was filming a porno. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> Some guy in catering got carried away with it. <laughs> but I don't know. I, I've never really lost it, cos you, you don't want to see the beast within, do you? I don't know what I'm capable of, really. <laughs> I, I know how angry I get at small stuff. So a towel that I was trying to hang on the radiator the other day fell off. <laughs> Twice it fell off. It was too heavy. It was too <coughs> heavy, but I don't like to tuck it in because then the condensation doesn't come out of the back and you get a damp wall. So it needed to hang. Am I on mum's neck? <laughs> so I lost my temper then. I said some things I didn't mean to that towel. Joe, um, what's been getting on your nerves recently? Oh, my watch. Got a new watch. What do, you look, do you think it looks nice? Yeah, it looks nice, yeah. So it's a What's smart it? watch. It's a smart watch. Yes, if I've gone for some exercise, it predicts what I've been doing. So if I go for a run, <laughs> it says, oh, did you go for a run? And it's quite accurate. Go for a swim. Oh, did you do 20 minutes of swimming? When I have a wank, <laughs> um, it thinks I'm playing volleyball. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite aggressive, isn't it? <laughs> Popped up on the phone. Did you do 12 minutes of volleyball at 1am? <laughs> I don't remember doing it just before bed, but... Where's the other way around if you're a volleyball player, like a professional, and your watch keeps going, and another wank? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Countdown, very popular show, but it's important to appeal to the youth. Quite right. So I've brought some new letters for the board, and they're all emojis, cos that's how the youth communicate. So, for example, like, these are obvious ones. If these come up, you get, immediately get four extra letters for these ones. <laughs> if you get really lucky, that one comes up. The QWERTY keyboard, you get 26 mm. extra letters. <laughs> but then there are other letters that might help with words. So let's say you've got a nice seven here, frisbee, but, you know, you'd obviously like more letters. If the wink comes up, the wink emoji, you can pop that on the end. Now, that obviously changes the meaning of the word. So frisbee wink then means sex. <laughs> Time. That's a nice eight, but it'd be nice to make it into a, into a full nine. So then if you get the panda emoji, pop that in at the end, then it becomes bath time panda, and that means, of course, sex. <laughs> it's not just, it's not just uh, the letters round that these could be useful for. The numbers round, you can use it in the numbers round. So these are all numbers, for example. So, so these are my favourites. This is a smiling pile of poo. 72. <laughs> Head exploding because you've come home and your wife Margaret says she's having an affair and you say, Margaret, is he better than me? And she says, Martin, please don't make me say what I'm about to say. And you're like, no, Margaret, I need to hear what you're going to say. And she's like, Martin, don't make me say it. And he's like, just, is he better than me? And she says very solemnly, we have a nice time. 29. <laughs> Mr. 
Matt Ewins is a tech genius. He could easily hack into the computer of a famous comedian, steal a photo of his micro-penis, and threaten to send it to all his contacts unless he was allowed to appear on that comedian's late-night comedy quiz show. <laughs> Great to have you here, Matt. <laughs> Uh, Matt, it's your first time on the show. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, Jimmy, I'm a big fan of making silly little videos. Uh, my flatmates, they like watching football, but I find it to be one of the dullest things in the world. But I found a way of making football more interesting with my video editing skills. I've taken footage of matches and gone through frame by frame and removed the ball. <laughs> Thanks for a far more exciting match. You're like, come on, try and get it in there. Come on, wait, what, hey, what? It's off it's the line, off. Oh, hey, come on, what? <laughs> hey, what? Hey, what's going on? Hey, what? <laughs> Please. A vowel. Thanks, We'd Jake. love a vowel, please. Mm. Well, that's a consonant, <laughs> actually. <laughs> can you replace it with the, um, that emoji? If, if I can catch it. I mean, if it's on the floor, it's dead to me. <laughs> wow, this is a challenge, isn't it? It's a good old game of slice a card at a pregnant lady's face. <laughs> We're just going to take a quick look at that in slow-mo. <laughs> Superb. <laughs> like well, I tell you, that volleyball's really paid off. <laughs> um, uh, Richard, have you got a mascot this evening? I'm, I'm wearing it. What this, have you done? It's my lucky cast. Well, hang on, it's got a calculator on it. That's what brings me the luck. <laughs> 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 well, you can't have a calculator on countdown. That's not in the rules. That is not good luck. <laughs> OK, right, I'll, um, I've, al I've always got a backup, <laughs> regular, non-calculator so, so cast. You've actually broken your arm? Yes. How did you break your arm? I was fighting for justice. <laughs> <laughs> Could you be slightly more specific? Well, justice? <laughs> well, That's justice. Less specific, isn't it? National justice. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask you, Sean, do you have any celebrity beefs? Loads. Uh, Paloma Faith. What's your issue with Paloma? All I said... <laughs> all, <laughs> all I said was she had a shit hat... <laughs> ..and she's a pound shop Bjork. <laughs> <laughs> and then, oh, kaboom. That's so mean. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Yoko Ono. <laughs> Come on, woman, you're talented. We want another album. Get out there and do it. <laughs> um, oh, oh. Nick Knowles. Hello, cool. money. <laughs> <laughs> what did you...? Nick makes his own Viagra. <laughs> uh, in a lock-up. And, uh, right. it's good. <laughs> <laughs> It's, but it's too good. It's like rigor mortis. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you haven't tested this on anyone, have you? <laughs> I said, I'm not paying for this until it's been rigorously tested, so uh, we've fallen out. Um, Tom Hanks, cos he keeps... I bought an audio book. You know he does these audio books? Mm -hmm. He's got this audio book of him. He keeps gulping. <laughs> 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 and Stephen Hawking, the same problem, but not... Gulping was I've, I've got his audio books. He did brief history of time. Yeah, and cheeky bugger because he knows nobody finishes it halfway through it just starts humming <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, I got here a bit early and I nipped to you know the second-hand shop Next to the studio. It's opposite the ancient burial ground <laughs> You know that one and they only had one thing left would you believe it and it was this so I just managed to pick this up and it feels like <laughs> I was just meant to find it. And I thought, we could be like a double act. I call him Richard Johnson. <laughs> oh, I don't like it, size. It's your problem with my eyes! Oh, it's genuinely creepy. I don't like it, John. I don't think you should I like be the voice, though. With it. I think you shouldn't be messing with this kind of voodoo stuff. It's nothing... There's nothing... I don't understand. People keep saying I keep showing people it. I, like I showed my daughter it this morning. She went... Bananas. <laughs> you didn't wake her up with it, did you? Yeah. <laughs> I said, morning! <laughs> <laughs> he loves a one-liner, so he's going to do some gags. He loves a blue joke. Hey! Who wants to hear a joke? 
Yeah. Yeah, I'd love to hear a joke. Hey, you know they discovered diarrhea is hereditary. No, I hadn't heard that. Ah, it runs in your jeans! Runs in your <laughs> jeans! <laughs> do, do one for Susie that's about words. All right, then, Susie, you'll like this. I shit, <laughs> I shit myself on a conk site the other day, and uh, as I was running to the toilet... Is it not running to the toilet? No, no, I was on a count site, so you're always going past tents. Oh, oh. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> good. <laughs> OK, well, that's it here. I'll help you with letters as well. OK. Uh, John Richardson, everyone. John, I've seen a lot of horror films with puppets like this. Are you not worried about it jumping into your body? Think I want to change bodies with that bald in saggy mess. Get to buggery. <laughs> Freaking it. I'm not even touching it, mate. <laughs> Roisin says her most embarrassing moment was answering the door to a delivery driver whilst topless. <laughs> it begs the question, do you live in a carry-on film? <laughs> I was in a onesie. And it was hot in the summer. And I'm not, not having a bra on, it's just a onesie. And then I went to the loo. And then I left the loo, and then I was carrying on my day, the buzzer went, and I thought, well, I've obviously got a top on, cos I don't walk round the house topless. <laughs> so... so to go to the loo in a onesie is a bit of a palaver. Yeah. It's a fall down. And then I fall okay. down, and then I got up, pulled my trousers up, cos you don't always think I should get fully dressed again. I've been to the toilet, and I came out and said, like, oh, yeah, da-da-da. Delivery then... for uh, Mrs yeah. Tomness. <laughs> 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 Yeah, and then the buzzer went, and then I opened the door. It would have been weird if he'd gone, her, her. <laughs> <laughs> what did you order to eat? Uh, well, this is when I was probably on my... I was ordering quite a lot, so much that my accountant phoned me and asked me if I thought I was Madonna. <laughs> <laughs> Does your accountant think, Mad oh, Madonna, she orders a lot on delivery? <laughs> the last two times I've phoned you, you've had a, you have had to go and answer the door for delivery. <laughs> <laughs> I've just realised... Sorry, we were going to do counter, but now it's an intervention. <laughs> I've deleted the app. You had to delete the app. <laughs> Going too deep, you're getting small, you see. <laughs> That's how they get you with the light stuff. You're the start of a whole new campaign when the meal stops. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> the delivery driver, he's here tonight. It's Joe Wilkinson. <laughs> Um, I've been writing children's books recently. Right. I read a lot of books with my daughter. I just found they don't prepare them for life. You know, a lot of them are about, like, farmyard animals and princesses and stuff. So this one's a bit of a reality check, really. Oh, great. For young people. It's called um, Michelle and Her Frog. Can we hear a little bit? Yeah. It's um, about a lady called Michelle. She's going through the menopause and she's from Doncaster. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle lives with her teenage son, Larry, and her husband. Her husband doesn't need a name. He hasn't had an interesting thing to say for 23 years. <laughs> <laughs> it's Monday morning. Michelle wakes up her teenage son for school with breakfast in bed. She's cut the toast just the way he likes it. Morning, sweet pea, says Michelle. I wish you were dead, shouts Larry. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, Michelle has a little frog in her pocket that she talks to. Do you think he plays too much Fortnite on his PS4? Michelle asked the frog. No, he's taking the piss out of you, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> that night, Michelle's husband came home with a magazine about rock climbing. He'll never go rock climbing, but he likes to pretend he's got something to look forward to. <laughs> <laughs> Like you, isn't it? Uh. To cheer herself up, Michelle went to a Chippendale show at a function room behind a Toby Carvery. <laughs> <laughs> Afterwards, she went to a nightclub on her own. One girl thought she was a toilet attendant. Another lad kept shimmying over to her on the dance floor, farting and then going back to his friends. <laughs> he did it three times. <laughs> Michelle went over and shouted, You need a poo, go to the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Did I overreact? She asked the frog. No, to be fair, Michelle, he was a twat. <laughs> Eventually, Michelle lost her frog because she was drinking too much. <laughs> she went on a cheap holiday with a woman she hardly knew and met someone called Glyn. They opened up a falafel stand in a car park in Swindon and lived happily ever after. <laughs> I mean, lose the promo, everyone. You need to know for sort of just how deep some of those barbs were that I've been taking our daughter to a rock climbing centre in the Lake District <laughs> with a view to her getting into rock climbing. <laughs> uh, and our, our electrician is called Glyn. <laughs> I've brought along a head cam. 
That's right. I'll get a lot of uh, shit on this show. <laughs> I brought along this head cam and... Uh, <laughs> and it just... Like, for example, if, like, Rachel spits at me or whatever, I'll have proof, <laughs> because they always cut it from the show. Sorry, does that, does that happen before, does she...? Yeah, but they never leave it in. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it's just for my own protection. And, uh, you know, and it's good fun as well, cos there's lots of things you can do with it, you know, I look about, and people at home can see the crap I have to put up with. Have you ever wondered what it's like to get off a shield look? Yeah, I have always yeah, wondered. Yeah, so you can do that. Mm. <laughs> 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 I thought I'd show you some stuff. Um, so this is the countdown set in close-up. Um, down here. Oh, there, so I always forget. This is where Rachel has a little kit <laughs> between, the, uh, between the grounds. There's a few cans. <laughs> God, that stinks. We need to burn that. <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah, she always leaves a message on the, on the board for the crew. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else is there? Don't know what all this is. Is this usually here? Uh, lots of bored-looking people. Oh, there's a cameraman having a piss. <laughs> you animal. Oh, there was, there was one thing I always think of showing people. You're like this. Down here, what people don't know, this is, uh, this is the door to John's dressing room. <laughs> He's got, he's got the run of the whole desk. <laughs> <laughs> John Wilkinson, everyone. <laughs> Susie has written 15 books. 15? How do you manage to write so many books, Susie? It's almost like you're churning out any old shit. <laughs> <laughs> I love Susie Dent's books. Thank you. And I've got three of her audio books. Wow. Uh, I, you know what? Next time, I'm going to talk about your voracious sexual <laughs> appetite. <laughs> Good old days. Yeah. <laughs> I've missed that. Dirty stuff. <laughs> Dirty stuff. <laughs> Dirty stuff. It's gone too clean. It's all <laughs> about the literature. <laughs> we were going to do a joke about Susie having sex in a skip. But, um... Have you ever tried to get out of a skip? What, oh, sorry? It's really hard to get out of it, <laughs> of a skip. I got in a wheelie bin before. Again, you can get in, you cannot get out. <laughs> Is he trying to recycle you? Yeah, my mum made it. Um, she made a hot tub spa. Out of the bin? Out of the bin. She, Genius. She filled it, she filled it with water <laughs> and bubble bath and... I'm not lying. And we both got in. We had to shout for a neighbour to come and get us cos we couldn't get out. Are you looking at each other or looking away from each other? I'm looking away from each other. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's weird. I don't know if that's so weird. So, you were hostages tied together. <laughs> Did you empty it? <laughs> Did you empty yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, no, play. she, she <laughs> sterilised it and everything. Oh, lovely. She had a bad back, though, so it was meant oh. to be soothing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Roisin, Joe, you play a couple in the sitcom Afterlife. Yes. How do you think you'd get on in real life as a couple? <laughs> um... We wouldn't leave the house much. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put it that way. <laughs> we both love telly. <laughs> we both do really love telly. We really telly. love telly, I mean, yeah. Some people love telly, but we love we telly. We love telly, yeah. <laughs> We'd go to the delivery with now Tom. <laughs> Oh, you call us a bad time. You know what I mean? We're <laughs> watching telly in the buff. I'd go cardigan like John. <laughs> I wouldn't go full naked. You've, you've got to be very careful in just a cardigan. It's got real Winnie the Pooh vibes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, John, can I ask you, your massage chair, does it have any other features? Well, it's got... It's like heated seats, like in a... You know, like a Toyota car. Go on, give it a, give it a spin. You might as well. Pump it up a bit. Right. Oh, I can see it's glowing, yeah. Oh, it's nice. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Are you getting, like, a warm feeling around your crotch? <laughs> oh, God. It's like kind of a chocolate fountain down there now. <laughs> it's too hot. That's popped my hemorrhoid, you know, that chair. He told me for years not to tell anyone that. What did he tell you not he to said, tell? He said, don't mention his itchy anus. He wouldn't even let me tell my mum, and now he's just told everybody on he national wouldn't let TV. Him, he wouldn't let you tell your mum? I've stopped naming mine. <laughs> so you got your bum hole? No, my hemorrhoids. <laughs> <laughs> what were they called before? <laughs> I just named it after the Jacksons. 
Because it was like a family of raspberries standing over a grave, wasn't it? Yeah, it was awful. Over a grave! Just over a grave! That's the saddest Ribena advert of all time. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Uh, we've all got to earn. That sounds like you put your hemorrhoids out to work. I do. <laughs> Did you send the marketing team some intimate photos? <laughs> I was called Ribena after dark. <laughs> <laughs> Ribena bum kind. <laughs> Beck, what are you up to? I was um, just uh, <gasps> drawing a little illustration of um, Joe's asshole. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like a family of raspberry standing over a grave. <laughs> I know what I'm getting my back tattoo now. <laughs> Lee recently appeared in the BBC sitcom Semi Detached, where he played a man having a midlife crisis. I haven't seen it, but I imagine he gets his teeth whitened and has a hair transplant. <laughs> <laughs> they like weird. it when it's about you, don't they? <laughs> I've noticed that. Is that what uh, it is? Your because I haven't seen you for a while. Is that what that is? A transplant? That that's that. Well, the front, not all of it. The uh, front bit's a transplant. It was. There's I, a lot more of it now than when I last saw it, and I was worried that I was actually watching an old uh, repeat. <laughs> <laughs> Do they take the hair from somewhere else? They do take the hair from somewhere else. Where? The, the back of your head. Where were you thinking? Ass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a similar problem at, uh, at the... can, can, can we have a look at the... Can we have a look at that? That's, oh! That's nice. I had, I'd never so noticed that. It's because I'm so tall, you can't usually see that much. Because <laughs> you're, you're sitting down, we don't notice. No. Six two, yeah? Is Six it been two, rubbing yeah. on the bottom of tables? <laughs> 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 I was having my hair cut and I said, I'm a bit worried I'm going bald. And my barber said, well, you know, you, there's a place that does it up here just outside Skipton. <laughs> and I just thought, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> I, would, I would recommend you go to the place in Skipton. I would love to see what happens. <laughs> I've got loads of hair. But you've got loads to spare. You could donate to the women in Essex and still have hair. Thank you. <laughs> you could create your own Merkins. <laughs> Are they, uh, f uh, fan, uh, you know, yeah. They are wigs yeah. for down below. Yeah, I'll do that, I don't mind. Not much call for the Merkin now, is it? Went out sort of about 150 years ago. No, you just the see them on the road like masks. <laughs> 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 I've been on the show quite a few times now and I've worked out that probably the most important thing uh, is who you're with. It can be the difference between winning and losing. And yeah. tonight I feel very, very confident because tonight uh, John has got Joe. <laughs> <laughs> so I reckon we're in with a chance. Oh, yeah. You, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of their weaknesses, then? What, weirdy and beardy? I would say that John's weakness is his inability to occasionally let other people win this. He needs to learn that there's more to life than winning a countdown teapot. And I think that Joe's weakness is his weakness for roadkill and sniffing mothballs. <laughs> He's going to win. <laughs> Joe, if you could give people one piece of advice, what would that be? Cool. What, from my life? <laughs> <laughs> from a film? <laughs> from a film? I've heard that question <laughs> so many times in my life. Well, what would you give you one person? And no one has ever answered, what, from my life or from a film? <laughs> <laughs> God, <laughs> you've stumped me, Jimmy. Um, I'd, I'd have to say never... Never tell a bride with a bit of dog shit on her dress to chillax. <laughs> <laughs> they get annoyed, that's all I'm saying, they get annoyed. Especially yeah. when they find out it was you that threw it at her. <laughs> <laughs> We'd run out of confetti, I had to improvise. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I'll put it down to the stress of not being invited. <laughs> Over in Dictionary Corner, it's the Brett Domino Trio! Brett and Stephen are partners in crime, and that crime, I assume, is masturbating in public. <laughs> <laughs> the Brett Domino Trio just goes to show it doesn't matter how many times you do it, you won't go blind. <laughs> uh, Brett, you've performed all over the world. Uh, do you have yeah. a favourite venue? Do you know, I mean, we played in a, a converted abattoir in, in Madrid once. That was, uh... <laughs> well, that nearly didn't happen, though, did it? Because of you. Yeah, that... that... We nearly, nearly missed that one because I, I just uh, I had surgery on my right testicle about a week beforehand, yeah, about an hour before we went on, 
I noticed the, the stitches had come out. <laughs> so I was in the hotel room trying to get through to 111, you know, the NHS direct. <laughs> um, but if, if you phone 111 from Spain, you get the uh, Spanish Traffic Authority. Mm. And uh, <laughs> it took quite a while to find someone who spoke English. And then even when I did, he didn't really know what to, to do. <laughs> Sorry, what was the question? <laughs> can I, can I ask wow, you? that is a hell of a story. Yeah, please, Joe. Do you reckon you could recognise your bulls in a line-out? <laughs> In a lineup, I don't know if I could pick mine out. If there was like 20 photos of bulls, I said the nearest ones to me are mine. <laughs> yeah. Not always the case as you get older. You sort of lob them That's out of there. That's true. <laughs> um, John, you're seven. Uh, manlier. Mm, very good. Lee, I was eating some mashed potato the other day, and uh, my mashed potato was very mashy. <laughs> There's no way you could get mashed potato. That was more mashy than my mashed potato. <laughs> the person next to me says, You're wrong, because mine's mashier. Mm. I said, I don't remember that, it might crop up. I said, What do you do? He said, I work for the Oxford uh, Society. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> really? Says, yeah, we don't put all the words in. Susie Dent sometimes gets it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Is mashier in there, Susie Dent? Uh, no. Oh, okay. you can't, well, surely you can be mashier. Something gets mashed, mm. but something gets more mashed, it's mashier. Yeah. Uh, Seriously, doesn't it? Don't put your tongue back in your mouth. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> Never trust a woman who's reading the dictionary with a tongue out. <laughs> Seven points to John. <laughs> and, and, and lest we forget, Joe. <laughs>